Good afternoon to you. Mark Sadoth, HurricaneTrack.com here with your Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for Tuesday, November 5th, 2019. Let's start off today taking a look at the sea surface temperature anomalies for a good bit of the Western Hemisphere. This chart updated yesterday, as you can see there. And there's a couple of things that I will be following throughout the rest of the hurricane season, which is only a few weeks to go, and then quite closely in the off season. The first area will be the equatorial Pacific, those anomalies. And an anomaly is just a departure from the median or the mean or the average uh, departure from something. And in this case, the departure from the average. And the average sea surface temperature uh, across the equatorial Pacific, well, it's, it's a little bit warmer than average right now. You can see there's more warm areas than these little cold splotches. But we're not really in an El Nino pattern. This is kind of what we call warm neutral. So no indications really this far in advance of next year's hurricane season as to which way that's going to lean. I think we've all learned that by now. Looking at climate models out several months is not very helpful in terms of details. And it certainly isn't helpful for ENSO, El Nino Southern Oscillation Prediction, because every year it seems that the euro says we're going to have a strong El Nino, and we don't until we do. So anyway, we'll be watching this. Again, it's neat to be able to have these tools, and you can check in on this. Uh, we'll do that about once a week. The other area is the Atlantic's main development region. This gets a lot of attention, rightfully so, because when this is warmer than average, uh, and especially if the Pacific's colder over here, and another way to look at this, if this is warmer and this is colder, then you usually have a busier Atlantic hurricane season uh, because of that, that difference in, well, it's not just because of the difference in temperature, but um, I digress. Let's just go forward, shall we? Everything's warm through here for the most part. Subtropical Northeast Atlantic warm, the Western Atlantic warm. In fact, it's quite warm relative to average in and around Florida and off the East Coast. And that'll be something to watch as we get through the winter storm season coming up. Um, you get these strong intrusions of cold air that come down out of Canada, low pressure that can develop in the Gulf or elsewhere, and they track up the East Coast, closer to the coast, farther out to sea, whatever the case may be. But this very warm water relative to average, and believe me, it's not like it's warm. And in the Gulf Stream it is, but it's warmer than it should be. And that red in there indicating maybe three and a half, four degrees Celsius above average in a fairly large area of the Northeast Atlantic, or sorry, Northwest Atlantic off the Northeast Coast. So we'll monitor this. I'll take a peek at this about once per week, and we will see how things progress. Looking at the satellite animation for today, courtesy of Tropical Tidbits, down here in the islands, uh, the windwards and leewards, no organized areas of convective activity headed your way. Uh, just a few pop-up showers here and there. Strong westerly winds continue. Screaming across the deep tropics, same thing up here in the subtropics. For all intents and purposes, the Atlantic hurricane season, especially down here throughout the deep tropics, all the way over through the Gulf, is almost completely over. You know, I know statistically speaking we could still get something, but when you see these kinds of signs, very strong winds cutting across, even down here, you know, shearing winds, yep, you're just not going to see much development. And as I said yesterday, we're going to focus more and more on mid-latitude storms, that may pose the risk for high-impact weather events. And then we will look at things like ENSO, El Nino Southern Oscillation, sea surface temperatures, forecast, etc. You know, we'll always have something to talk about. I just may not be doing these updates every day, even as we progress through November here. Uh, and eventually, once we get to December, these will be once a week, usually on a Monday, and then more often if we have a big storm system to talk about. All right, speaking of big storm systems, there is a powerful cyclone up here in the northern Indian Ocean, Bay of, um, the not the Bay of Bengal, the Arabian Sea. It's off the Arabian Peninsula, Cyclone Maha, or however you pronounce that. And then what is more than likely the seasons or the year, and if we look at it from January through December, you know, December 31st coming up would make up the calendar year, uh, the strongest tropical cyclone of the year is this one 
uh, way out in the West Pacific, not affecting any land areas, thank goodness. Uh, the name of it looks like Halong, or I don't think it's Halong, probably Halong. And there were some estimates today that it was 150, 170 knots. This is all based on satellite estimates, and you can do that using what's called the Advanced Dvorak Technique. And we will get into that next hurricane season. I'm putting together a nice tutorial that I will share with you next May, a little preview of things to come. But just trust me, sometimes uh, when you look at satellites, you can just tell. And the meteorological community has a method to classify just like we do in the animal kingdom. You know, you can see pictures of things. Astronomers do it with stars and other stellar objects and, inter well, I guess interstellar objects. And the same holds true for meteorology. Just looking at satellite pictures, yes, you can tell that uh, how long here was very, very intense. And it's interesting because it is going to have an impact on lower 48 weather in the United States. Okay, so how? Well, that gets very complicated, but the simplistic way to put it is this massive source of heat and energy, and it's very fierce, uh, equivalent to a Category 5, stronger than Dorian uh, earlier today. This uh, typhoon was, again, estimates anywhere from 150 to maybe 170 knots, closing in on 200 miles per hour. Uh, with a pressure estimated of around 894 millibars. I was reading that on Twitter earlier today. So how does this affect, potentially, the United States? Well, you have the jet stream up here, uh, up here in the northern latitudes, and then you get this energy from this typhoon injected into that pattern, and it's kind of like giving a kid a lot of sugar or drinking a energy drink, or whatever. And to put it really like, you know, um, what's the word, extreme, it's like a shot of methamphetamine to the jet stream, okay? If you got Breaking Bad fans out there, you know what I'm talking about. Um, and no, I don't know from personal experience, but it's just these massive sources of heat, when they recurve into the westerlies, it is. It's like a big shot of some type of adrenaline, or whatever, you know, an illicit drug, whatever the case may be, that's what it does. And then it has these crazy ripple effects down the road, which get picked up by the global models, and the models are showing this highly amplified overall wavy pattern in the jet stream around the globe with strong high pressure over the western parts of North America and uh, extreme anomalous low pressure in the eastern parts of North America, coming up over the next uh, several days, you know, maybe out to a week. And that, my friends, is going to allow for these cold shots to come down into the lower 48, most of that east of the Rockies, and that could generate some storminess. You know, it certainly will. It's, it's a matter of where and how stormy, what's the impact, low, medium, high, etc. Those are details we have to work out later. So, I think it's pretty fascinating uh, that, yes, sometimes, as um, this gentleman here, Nathan Kitchens, he's a meteorologist, was talking about, um, he's a degreed meteorologist from Mississippi State, and, you know, he's telling it like it is, that the typhoon there, out over the West Pack, going to get injected and energizing the jet stream. Pretty fascinating, in my opinion. Looking at the GFS, speaking of eh, maybe fascinating, maybe it's not, maybe it's boring. Uh, the whole Atlantic Basin, here's the west coast. Whoops, let's change to a color you can see. West coast of Africa, eastern North America over here. And if we put this into motion over the next, uh, I don't know, about a week or so. Again, notice down here in the tropics, just not much going on. You don't have much energy bundling at all. See, it's just clear. None of these little yellow streamer areas of vorticity coalescing. Instead, yep, it's all up here in the higher latitudes, and that is a sign that the seasons have changed and we're moving away from tropical cyclone season where the energy doesn't focus down in the tropics. It's, instead, it's doing so much more in the higher latitudes. Uh, look right there at about 90, 84 to 96 hours. Atlantic Canada... 
you guys, uh, you never know. Looks like a pretty good storm system there. Some of these little impulses do get rather energized, and we're getting towards that season now where we're going to be looking for nor'easters, powerful coastal storms, maybe some plains blizzards, things like that. Um, the, the downside to all of this, uh, in terms of lower 48 weather, out west, you know, nice weather is nice, but you need some rain out here. And as you can see, most of the map is blank today in terms of any hazards and watches or warnings or anything like that. But boy, the west is just still so dry. No precipitation in San Francisco, as an example, during the month of October, I read. And that's continuing now for the first five days of November and probably thereafter as well uh looking ahead for the lower 48 storminess generally confined to the nation's east part east section east of the rockies over here as troughiness uh reigns supreme in the east with ridging out west dry for california the great basin nevada arizona stormy and progressively colder uh, for most of the east as we approach the mid part of November. This goes out to about a week. And, of course, nothing from the tropics. I'm not really worried about that too much. Uh, and the main focus here that I will be watching, do we get a storm system that comes up the coast at some point? Maybe we get a big plains blizzard over here somewhere. Um, I'm not seeing any signs in the long term of any major storminess out west where you desperately need it. So for now... The pattern is such where it's going to be trough in the east, ridge in the west, and a progressive but not too high-impact major storm kind of pattern. Not yet. And you can bet on weather Twitter, as we call it, you know, the whole weather blogosphere, hurricane blogosphere, when we're talking about hurricanes. You, know, you got Twitter, Facebook, message boards, etc. Yep, when it starts getting sniffed out, some big storm, just like with hurricanes. You know how it is. Oh, weather Twitter starts going crazy. Did you see the eight-day forecast from the whatever model? Huge snowstorm for so-and-so location. You know that's coming. And so uh, we'll be watching for that. And when those become a reality, um, I should be able to get out and show you what those look like in person. We will verify those forecasts just like I do during hurricane season. All right. All right, well, that's it from me for today. Uh, kind of nice that things are calming down a little bit as we transition out of hurricane season and more towards winter weather and so forth. And as I mentioned yesterday, if you didn't see yesterday's video, maybe you're brand new to the channel or whatever, go back and check it out, the November 4th update, as I do outline some plans going forward. Very exciting things coming up in the off season. We don't just turn off the lights on November 30th and pop them back on again in mid to late May. Plenty of stuff going on between now and then. And it'll be great to have you along as part of all of that. All right, have a great rest of your Tuesday. Thanks, as always, for tuning in from whatever device you happen to be doing so from. It's great to have you. I am Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com. I'll talk to you again tomorrow.